So let me share the screen. So what is occipital neuralgia? So the occipital neuralgia is the headache characterized by the piercing, throbbing or electric shock like chronic pain which is located in the upper back, back of the head and behind the ears, usually one side of the head. So it may go anteriorly, but it usually restricted to the posterior part of the scalp. And pain starts from the neck and then spreads upward. So this is the territory for the greater occipital nerve. And this is for the trigeminal portion, that is the ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular. But there is a concept that this trigeminal nucleus projects posteriorly and sometimes there is interconnection and through that sometimes even the occipital neuralgia pain comes to the anterior side up to the back of the eye as well. So pain may be felt in the scalp, forehead and behind the eyes as well. Scalp tenderness may be present. Eyes may be sensitive to light. The location of pain areas supplied by the greater and lesser occipital nerve is usually painful. So we have three nerves here, greater, lesser, and this here is the great auricular nerve. But remember, lesser and the great auricular nerve are the branches from the superficial branches from the cervical plexus. And this greater occipital nerve and slightly posteriorly, here is the territory of the third occipital nerve. They are from the dorsal divisions. The location of the area is supplied by the greater and lesser occipital nerve in the sort of occipital neuralgias. Now, why it can occur? It is because of the irritation or injury of the greater and lesser occipital nerve, which may be due to trauma at the back of the head, may be due to road traffic accident or acceleration deceleration injury, leading to FB pressure associated disorders and causing the same thing. It may be due to the pinching of the nerves by the muscle spasm. It may be a compression of the nerve due to the osteoarthritis or by the tumors. It may be associated with the localized inflammation or infection like gout, diabetes, vasculitis, or sometimes we may not found any cause. We call it idiopathic. And for the greater occipital nerve block, how we need to do, let me show you in the volunteer. Put a pillow below the abdomen to stretch the neck. I have to double balance. Put We are first going to come from the occiput and come down from the occiput, occipital bone. We are coming down, down, and here depth is less, but here we can see that we have to, what we are looking at, we are looking at the bifid spinous process. Let me, and once we got it, we have to again re-examine whether we got is the first one or not. Okay, if it is not the first one, then it may not be the area. So from above downwards coming, coming, coming. We are getting the, in fact, I can see this muscles in both the sides, okay? So this is the bifid spinous process and this is the, towards the right side of the patient, we can see the oblicus capitis inferior and this is the left side of the patient, we can see the oblicus capitis inferior. Now we are making that sinus process at the right side of the screen and we are rotating the left side of the probe to get the full portion of the whole portion of this oblicus capitis inferior muscle. So here we can see the oblicus capitis inferior muscle. Now here there are two muscles. We can see clearly one muscle above is very small. We can see the small muscle above that is the trapezius. I told you it is a flat muscle. So that is the trapezius. And below the muscle what we can get is the second layer or you can see the semispinalis capitis. 
and even below to that muscle what we are getting is the obliquus capitis inferior muscle and in between the obliquus capitis inferior and the uh, this is the obliquus capitis inferior and this is the semispinalis capitis in between that you can see a black nerve here okay this nerve this you can see a black hypoequate nerve here and this one is the semispinalis capitis muscle and this is the obliquus capitis inferior and in between those at this plane we can see the nerve and this nerve is the greater occipital nerve so to do a block we need to come here from the lateral side so how our needle tra trajectory will be our needle trajectory will be like this so here we have to come we can if we want to see the needle more clearly there is no problem we can come from the lateral as well and we have to go here and around the nerve we need to inject the local anesthetic steroid so this is the greater occipital nerve and that is how we need to inject at the greater occipital nerve and here you can see the another muscle this is another muscle okay i'm with the, with the arrow let me change here we are having another muscle and this muscle is the splenius capitis muscle i have told you about this all these muscles at the beginning so that is how we need to do the greater occipital nerve block 